Are you, like many, all agog at the fresh revelations of Downing Street parties and the accounts of dubious comments made to members of Parliament by whips and so on? Are you pondering the words of Jesus, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed? What you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. Some of us are wondering what else has been lurking in the dark corridors of power which is still to come to light. Personally, I had a little bit of sympathy for Boris Johnson. Not that much. I didn't vote for him. But uh, did he ever come to power on the ticket that he was a man of great integrity? Uh, and all these journalists who spend their time talking about him, are they people of great integrity? Um, I think we might have mixed views on some of these questions. But if you're fed up with all these awful stories, uh, whether you're, it's the stories themselves and what's happened that makes you annoyed, or whether it's the, uh, the way the, the journalists and politicians go on about them, if you feel you need an antidote to all this, well, folks, we're looking in church this term at the subject of holiness. A strange word, perhaps, but the word which above all describes God. Holiness is everything which weak, deceptive humans are not. There are no dark corners to God. There is no lack of integrity. There is no hypocrisy. When we meet God face to face, as we all shall do one day, he will not be less than what we expected. We will not be somehow disappointed that he's greyer and less pure and less awesome than we thought. No, on the contrary, we will be overawed that he's way more than we could ever begin to imagine or think. He won't disappoint us. He will overwhelm us. In English, we tend to avoid using double negatives. They're not normally a good thing. They can be confusing. Um, they're not normally very helpful. If I said, for example, I did not eat nothing, um, strictly speaking, that is equivalent to saying I did eat something. But it's a, a not particularly helpful way of expressing ourselves because in English, negatives tend to cancel each, out, each other out. So I did not eat nothing means that the two nots disappear and uh, I did eat something. But in the language the New Testament is written in, in, in New Testament Greek, uh, when you have nots together in the same sentence, they don't cancel each other out. They, they strengthen each other. They reinforce each other. They're there for emphasis. And in uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, we read these words. God is light, and in him there is not no darkness. God is light and there is not, not any darkness, no darkness at all, absolutely none. As the message translation puts it, there's not a trace of darkness in him. God is light, he is holy, he is pure. He's full of integrity, there's no hypocrisy, there are no grey areas, there is no shadow of turning with thee as we sometimes sing. I wonder how that makes you feel about God and about yourself. On the one hand, it should delight us. Aren't we longing for a God? Aren't we longing for leaders? Aren't we looking for people in authority who can be like that, utterly reliable, not hypocritical? People of integrity, people for whom there are no dark corners, there are no secrets waiting to come to light. Oh, to have a God like that, to know a God like that. And yet that's perhaps what starts to worry us and perhaps even terrify us as we think about how could I stand? How could I know? How could I come anywhere near a God like that? What might that do to me if I did come near him? If you go right back to the start of the Bible, the account of Adam and Eve in the garden and the first and how sin entered the world. Uh, after they had been tempted and after they'd eaten of the fruit which they had been commanded not to eat, um, God came looking for them in the garden and up to that point they'd had a, a lovely relationship with God. They'd had an open relationship with God. They'd been able to talk with him. They'd been able to walk together in the garden. And now though, what happened? God comes looking for them. He comes calling for them in the garden and they say to him, and I think this is, this is poetic language as a, as a lot of those early verses in Genesis are. This is poetic languages that's trying to tell us something about God and about ourselves because they say to God, 
we're afraid because we're naked. We're afraid because we're naked. And it's not, this is not because the Bible's squeamish about sexual organs and, and or that God's squeamish about them and he made them for goodness sake. It's not, it's not that it's, the, the, that, that's not the issue. What Adam and Eve are expressing in those words is that they, they as now as sinful creatures, they can't bear to have God looking at them particularly looking at them, the, the parts of them that are, in a sense, most intimate and most expressive of who they are, because they have this great sense of people who've, who've fallen short of the glory of God. They need to cover their shame. Their instinct, their instinct is to hide, to crawl away into a dark corner out of the light. And yet here's the good news, which the rest of the Bible introduces us to gradually and progressively. And ultimately we meet Jesus, the Son of God who came to earth to take away our shame, to bear it himself so that we can stand without guilt and without shame before a holy God. So that God looks at us and sees not our sin and our shame, but he sees the goodness and the integrity of Jesus. So that we no longer have anything we need to hide. There's no secret that we're terrified that God might discover about us. He already knows us and yet he loves us. We can come to God naked and yet not ashamed. We fear no met inquiry that's going to, un that's going to reveal something that God didn't know about us, which means he'll no longer love us. We fear no Sue Gray. We fear not that our hard drives may one day be examined. We fear not because of Jesus. We fear not because we know that we can stand confidently before a holy God. Because we are clothed in the goodness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There's a song we sometimes sing. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Are you standing there in the power of Christ? Are you standing there knowing that you can, you can be, that you can stand before a holy God, naked and yet unashamed? because of Jesus. If you'd like to know more about this, uh, please come along on Sunday. Uh, details on our, our website and social media pages and find out more about this extraordinary topic of holiness. Find out what it means to have a relationship with a God who is utterly holy and yet utterly loving and accepting of us when we come to him through Jesus Christ.